Hello, hello, and thank you to anyone who has been waiting. We were experiencing a little bit of technical difficulty, but nevertheless, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of our Higher Education series. My name is Kia Cottrell, and I am joined with my good friend, Jamie Pitchforth, who is our Head of Education for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. How are you doing, Jamie? It's good to see you again, Kia. That week has flown by since we were last here. Absolutely. Right. So, Jamie, today we're talking about a really exciting topic, especially right now. We're, we're going to be discussing today attracting students and the importance of attracting students, especially in the university space. What I love about today is that it's now August 4th, and usually August is synonymous with you know, getting ready to go back to school, right? Mm -hmm. We have students all over the world packing up their belongings, heading to the dorms for the first time. Maybe they're kicking off that fall semester. So leading up to this back to school period, Jamie, what do you see some of the universities do to actually attract students? No, I, I, absolutely, Keir. I think, firstly, and most importantly, recruitment has never been so important. Uh, the university landscape is definitely a lot more competitive today than it ever has been before. So, like, creating that positive profile, that positive brand to drive recruitment has become a, a, a huge focus. You know, the universities now are not just competing for the best students but there's a new breed of, of international students that bring lucrative revenues from new markets, you know, such as, as Asia. So we're seeing not only the traditional um, recruitment strategies, so open days, recruitment fairs, uh, advertising, but we're seeing university executives now visiting distant, distant countries, developing partnerships, promoting their brands, really to uh, recruit from afar. So we, we, we're seeing huge focus in that recruitment area. It's, you know, you touch on international recruitment, and I think that's really a timely concept, especially thinking about how much these activities have evolved over the last year and a half because of the pandemic. I mean, I, I think back to the very short time ago when I was attending university and actually attending <laughs> college fairs in person, what what do you think that shift has been because of the pandemic and not being able to do some of those activities virtually? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Thanks, Kia. I, I think technology and, and digitalization, you know, we see the universities really embracing digitalization, but using the technology in that digitalization to reach and, and influence students is, is something that universities have, have really fully embraced. And I, I definitely think the pandemic has, has accelerated that, that need, that development for digital content. So going virtual is an investment area and a, and a trajectory that you know, we've, we've seen for a while, but definitely it, it accelerating. You know, if you're a student and you're considering um, what university should I start with? You know, the first place you start typically is ingesting digital content. Um, but we're seeing more and more universities doing things such as offering virtual tours um, and insightful content. So, you know, with again, with the pandemic, but um, with international students, it's not always easy. And certainly at this moment in time to jump on a, a you know, a train, a bus or a, a flight and go visit a university. So. Yeah. The idea of being able to virtualize that and deliver quite rich experiences uh, through virtual tours and digital content is, is absolutely huge. We're also seeing a, a lot more embracement of, uh, of social media. So universities are starting to uh, employ student ambassadors, um, and these ambassadors are using their social media to really deliver positive brand messages, positive images, um, to, you know, to a generation of digitally engaged uh, students. So yeah. I think social media is, is one huge area that we've seen a lot of growth in. But I always talk about this, the trip advisor effect, where, you know, you look at peer groups, if you're thinking of going to a university, what are other people saying about that university? So that whole social media, the whole student ambassador thing is, is become really key for the recruitment and delivering the right messages to encourage students. I find that really interesting, this concept around using social media to attract students. I mean, it's really aligned with how generationally 
the student demand has evolved, right? So I was just speaking to my niece. We just started pre-med at St. Louis University, really proud of her. Mm -hmm. uh, and thinking about what it was that she was looking for in a university and on top of having that academic excellence, the type of programs and services, it's interesting because I don't think nowadays the network is necessarily top of mind because it has become so second nature. I mean, Wi-Fi yeah. is almost a basic need right after food, water, shelter, right? I mean, that that's really the shift that we're looking at a lot, like across these more recent students yeah so Kia I, I absolutely agree uh, with your niece you know she's absolutely right that wi-fi connectivity it, it, it is now a utility um, I mean my daughter is exactly the same she's got uh, an option to go to three universities this October um, oh. and and poor wi-fi connectivity would would be an absolute shock um, something that wouldn't be expected it's certainly not being considered by her um you know yeah. and if you know it's, it's only ever considered or discussed when i when i prompt it but it is absolutely just expected you know we, we've come a long way in a i would say a relatively short period of time it was only seven or eight years ago here here in in, in the uk where um, the National Student Survey, which is a, a student survey of some five million million students that goes out uh, questionnaire and, and Wi-Fi was added to the National Student Survey and we started to see universities really investing more and more in, in wireless. So I think yeah. the networks become critical beyond just that that utility piece, the wi the, the Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, it's really now about student experience. You know, the, the, the landscape has, has massively changed. Uh, the average student now is arriving at university with five devices. You know, you've got your, your watch, your, your, um, your laptop, your, your phone, your iPad, your gaming console. And, you know, I, I haven't seen other um, IoT connected devices that need connectivity. And this has really put a huge stress on the network. So five devices in, in October per, per student means around 13 times the amount of traffic on the network so yeah. you know my daughter you look at the culture and what's important to her is is flawless connectivity and great experience so you know whether that be for her learning her social or a media but also for her creature comforts you know that ability to get back to your halls of residence and watch netflix hd watch amazon prime so, you know, for the university's failure to deliver on the, the expectations, you know, the needs of, of um, students like your niece, my, my daughter and, and, and everybody else um, has a really negative exposure that can damage and affect recruitment and, and make that really hard. So the networks become a mission critical asset that, that needs huge investment to support the recruitment. It's interesting, the concept around at home comforts on campus, right? And that yeah. expectancy of my devices connect, I have that flawless experience. Uh, it should be carried in through my experience when I go off to the university, 100%. Now, you mentioned your daughter going to university and as a, as a parent, we've talked a little bit about your journey and going through this process and applying and, and some of your concerns. Um, as a parent, if if we're looking at the students' needs evolving, have those parental needs also evolved? You know, usually as the person who's maybe funding the university experience, but what can universities do to help win the heart and minds uh, of parents? No, I, I, absolutely. And I think, you know, as a parent, what, 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 what you know, what's on sort of top of my agenda, I say. So uh, safety and security, you know, is, is probably the priority is to make sure that the world that she'll be living in is, uh, is a safe and secure one. Um, and health and well-being, you know, is shortly followed. But I think insights, the, the, the network now, you know, we pay a lot of money to, for, for our students to go to university. Um, you know, and many students and families incur lots of debt in order to, to go through that journey. So making sure that that student, you know, your daughter, your son is on the right trajectory. You know, we, we call it the success trajectory. But are they attending class? Are they engaging in activities in, the, you know, are they engaging in the community, which is obviously great from a, a health and well-being perspective. So there is the ability now that, that these insights 
can provide intelligence to identify, you know, is my daughter, is your niece, is every student now, you know, on that trajectory to, to being successful? Are their mm. grades good? Are they in the library? Are they doing the right things? So, you know, for me personally, as a, as a parent, being able to, to gain visibility of, of some of those insights to make sure and, and assure that we're on that right trajectory and that the, the university is using that intelligence to put the right measures, you know, potentially support my daughter in certain areas where she's not necessarily succeeding or, or, or delivering the right, you know, the right engagement would, would be a huge benefit to me. Um, and I think every family around the world. And, and now that insight is directly underpinned by the network, right? So it's yes. network utilization, network activation, um, all of the different applications and programs that are being supported on that infrastructure becomes that single layer that it's almost now critical, right? Bringing all of these pieces together. And I think that's actually the, the added edge that gives universities that competitive, that competitive upper hand, right? In, in the competitive landscape, right? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I think, Student experience is is probably you well, not probably is the number one thing criteria that the students are trying to achieve. Uh, sorry, the universities are trying to achieve is is deliver a, a fantastic experience that um, really creates positive press, not just in the minds of, of of the students that are at that university, but so that they share their experiences with their friends, with their siblings, you know, their younger daughters, the younger brothers. So that, you know, they're, they're breeding the next generation of students to come to their university by, by making these investments and using the network in this way. Yeah. Now, Jamie, we, we only have a few minutes left, but I, I did want to talk about the transformation we're seeing across technology and specifically the network. You know, we, we have all kinds of cloud applications. We're talking about everything. We're moving to virtual or hybrid models from a futuristic look ahead, specifically when it's looking into attracting students and using technology to help drive that student engagement that you mentioned, that um, network analytics and insight, what do you see kind of long-term wise areas that universities can lean into or, or start to investigate to really build out their strategy? Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I think to be honest, that, that starts with the, the words critical business asset. And those universities that acknowledge and accept and identify that the network as, as a critical business asset that mm -hmm. needs that continual investment, I, if they are investing in the right areas, the right technologies, evolving the right platforms, um, et cetera, et cetera, then that, that's the you know a trajectory, that's the journey that, that, that we need to be on. But I think the network is, you know, looking into the future, is a, a tool that uh, firstly makes the world a, a lot smaller place. It, it, it kind of removes borders, it removes boundaries, and enables universities to, to you know, access what is effectively a, a global economy. So yeah. development of the, you know, that rich digital content um, is, is such a critical part. And I, I definitely see in the future that from a, from a virtual perspective, students that aren't fortunate enough to be able to travel to a campus in a foreign country will have the ability to use technology such as virtual reality. Maybe on campus we'll start to see augmented reality, but a lot more richer digital experiences coming into play that are all dependent on you know, exceptionally good network experiences and, and the network in general. There you have it. I mean, a, another great example of the criticality of, of a network and, and a network that is robust and agile to meet the growing demands of students and parents of students and the demands of the community and culture that you know we're, we're, we're trying to ultimately serve. So thank you so much, Jamie, for your time today and for your insight. as well. You. And guys, be sure to tune in August 18th. My colleague Mike will be discussing user experience. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Goodbye.